we lost plateau suck. I think at some point or another, pretty much all of us have experiences. You're going from week to week, you're seeing results, you're feeling good about the progress you're making, and then it slows, and then it stops. Many weeks have gone by, nothing. It's not that you're doing something wrong. I mean, sure, sometimes people are consuming more calories than they think they are, or they get a little more relaxed. But really, a lot of the time, it just comes down to the fact that our bodies adapt. They're really good at it. You know, there's research out of the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that shows that even if you follow your weight loss plan to the letter, dot the I's, cross the T's, most people experience weight loss plateau within six months. Like I said, your body's really good at adapting. So it's really good in some respects, not fun in others. So let's kind of look at some of the ways your body's adapting. First of all, metabolic rate, or how many calories you burn per day, either completely at rest, not doing anything just to live, or throughout the course of your day doing your daily activities. That number goes down as you lose weight. There's a myth that you know people who are larger have uh, more body mass. People who maybe, let's say, have always struggled with weight, Oh, my you know metabolism is so slow. I wish I could have fast metabolism like that skinny person. That's not always the case. Your body mass is actually the single greatest determiner of how many calories you burn per day. Think of it as trying to fuel a smart car versus fueling a 16-wheeler. There's just so different. I'm not saying one is better than the other, but it's good to think about that. So body size is going to determine how much fuel you need to keep going throughout the day. So as you lose weight, your metabolic rate is naturally going to drop. A 150-pound person is going to need fewer calories to sustain themselves than someone who weighs 200. Let's say you're that 200-pound person and you drop to 150. Here's where it really sucks. You're not going to just burn fewer calories because you're now 150 pounds. You're going to burn fewer calories because your body is happy to adapt to burn fewer calories. So you might actually burn closer to the amount of calories that somebody who's 125 pounds generally burns. A study came out a couple years ago, a lot of people call it the biggest loser study because it looked at people who had successfully lost weight on the show. And it showed that the average person actually burned 500 fewer calories per day than someone who weighed the same amount but had never been at a a body weight that's higher than their current current weight. As a general rule, for every 10% reduction in body weight, you need to decrease your calories by about 20% to keep losing weight or to maintain that weight. Two, as I mentioned before, you know you're burning fewer calories as you're moving throughout the day, and this also applies to exercise. So, running a mile is going to burn more calories at the beginning of your weight loss journey than it will six months into it. One, because your body's becoming smaller, or that's what I assume if you're successfully losing weight, but also because your body's learning how to do that exercise. It's learning how to do it really efficiently so that it doesn't have to burn as much energy or calories. And that's really good. That's why people can have faster and faster mile times, because their body's learning how to do something more efficiently. Unfortunately, it doesn't help you when you're trying to burn <laughs> burn a lot of calories to lose weight. So what do you do? Progressive overload. It's just trainers speak for constantly challenging your body. There are a lot of different ways you can do this. One of my friends, Mike Donovanic, he um, uses an acronym FIT, so it's FIT principle. So you change up the frequency, intensity, time, and technique. You change up one of those variables every six-ish weeks. So maybe you're exercising more. Um, you're going to the gym more often. That's one way to increase the load of what you're doing. Intensity. Maybe you're lifting more weight. Heavier weight, fewer sets. It's a good way to change things up. Time. Then maybe you're spending more time in the gym. Maybe you're spending less time because you're cranking up intensity and technique or type. Maybe you're just doing something different. Maybe you've switched up your bench press with incline bench press, battle ropes with sled pushes, kettlebell swings with deadlifts. They don't have to be huge changes, but these little changes keep your body adapting. Um, you know, it's how some people talk about shocking your body or surprising your body. Well, your body doesn't really have emotions that way. And if you jump around a lot, 
you don't really have consistency, you're not really progressing. So this is all about progressing. That's why the changes should be sort of minimal, like kettlebell swings or a deadlift. They're both, both going to work your posterior chain. They're very similar, but they work the body a little bit differently. It's a little bit of a different stimulus. Um, there's a different speed, and the exact benefits you're going to get are different. So move from one to the other. Try it out. Mix it up. It's just those little changes that will keep you moving towards your goal. Again, it's nice to mix up one of those variables every six weeks as opposed to just being like, okay, six weeks, gonna change everything. You don't need to do that. Keep these little changes going. If every 12, 24 weeks you want to start with something brand new, you like some variety, go for it. Why not? You know, you need to enjoy your workouts and what you're doing, but you don't have to to constantly shock or surprise your body. You need to keep progressing. And that's what getting past a plateau is all about. It's all about progressing. The last thing to keep in mind, and this is really interesting, is the idea of set point theory. So there's this idea that your body likes to be at a certain weight. And this is determined by everything from, you know, your genetics to how everything in your life has responded to your genetics. And that determines a lot of your set point where your body likes to be. Again, it likes homeostasis. The thought used to be that your set point was your set point was your set point. Your body had to struggle to be at anything underneath it. You basically just had to like hate life to get 20 pounds lower than, than your set point. A really interesting thought that I'm um, reading in the research now is that it's a possibility that these plateaus are actually your body adjusting to a new, lower set point. Honestly, I honestly hope that this is the case because that would make all of our lives really awesome. There's still a lot to be learned and determined in that area, but I think it is always wise. When you have a plateau, sit with it. Sit with it for a little bit. You're not gaining. You're not working in the opposite direction. And then after a month, I know, I know that's a little bit longer than you might want. Go ahead and try moving forward a little again. Maybe you're cutting some of those calories. Maybe you're switching up your routine. But realize that these plateaus are part of the process to get you where you want to go. Nothing in life really ever is straight from point A to point B. And that, that's okay. That's good. So just keep going.